Today on Zez Retro, I'm gonna show you a few very simple arcade stick mods that you can use to get your stick feeling exactly right. Let's go. I grew up in Australia in the 1990s and we had arcades, we were playing some Street Fighter or some Ghost and Goblins down at the Milk Bar, but to have your own arcade stick at home, that really felt like some rich kid's fantasy. And now I love collecting arcade sticks these days as an adult. They're so real and physical and it's this huge box that's often larger than the console. And I, I like how it becomes so instantaneous and so muscle memory for, for you to play and use this thing. When I first started to get into arcade sticks, at first I saw a few and I was like, hey, what's the deal? A button is a button. And then you start playing and you start using them and you very quickly realize a button is not a button. And whether that's real or perceived, it's the small little differences that can make a huge personal difference when playing on an arcade stick. I like how simple arcade sticks are at their core. Like it's just buttons that are with two wires, a ground and a live one. And I like how a stick is a really mechanical device. It's, you can understand it. It's just a shaft that's hitting micro switches. There's five wires that come from it, up, down, left, right, and ground. The, the PCB that runs an arcade stick doesn't have to be fancy. All it's got to do is take those five inputs and transcode them into whatever the controller or the USB is or something like that. And you can certainly get super fancy arcade sticks. You can have turbo and programmable macros and multiple systems that can work on, but a stick at its core can be really simple. And I like that. I think it's gotta be something like working on a classic car. When you understand a few of the basics, you can almost fix anything on it. Not that I have any idea about working on cars, but I can fix arcade sticks. And we're gonna look at some mods right now. Just remember, I like playing shmup, so that's the perspective that I'm coming from, from someone who likes to play shooters. I like fighting games, but goddamn, do I find them frustrating. Oh, the combos you gotta remember, and the next move, and then the Z meter, when am I supposed to use that? I mostly just wanna throw the stick against the wall. However, I think the point of this video is, here's a bunch of options, look, just try them out. See which ones feel best to you, and use that. There's no right or wrongs going on here. I'm also gonna be talking about the Sanwa JLF, which is kind of a standard, you might say. It's what most, uh, you know, if you're not using a Sanwa, you're using something that functions very similar. You've got a shaft, there's a restrictor gate here, it's moving around, there's micro switches inside. It's pretty easy to dismantle. As I said, we've got the five wires coming off there. So there are certainly different sorts of sticks, but these tips are mainly around this sort of spring and shaft style. The first simple mod you can do is change the restrictor plate, which is this opaque bit of plastic, which as the name suggests, restricts the movement of the shaft. Now I've only got square gates. Uh, that's just seemed to be all the ones that I've got on my sticks, but the other style is an octagonal gate. And an octagonal gate can be useful for fighting games when you're trying to pull off those tricky diagonals. It's pretty easy to replace the restrictor gate, just unclip it off the top of the stick, take it off, clip on the new one, and you're good to go. The next small mod you can make is to change the spring inside of your stick. It's what controls how hard it is to physically move the stick from left to right, up to down. Now a standard JLF is fairly loose. It's not too hard to move, but I found when I was first learning Dodonpachi that it was too loose. I couldn't quite control myself through the, the tight bullet hell patterns. And I moved to a stiffer spring and it was a little bit easier at first for me to learn the game and learn those extremely precise movements. To get to your stick's spring, first you've got to take off the restrictor plate and then pull out the micro switches from the PCB. The hardest part for me is usually getting the E-clip off. That's that little thing that holds the actuator down. This time it was pretty easy, but they can be tough. Uh, you've kind of got your put your finger over it uh, to make sure that the clip doesn't fly across the room. And then the whole thing is holding down the actuator. So you've got to make sure it doesn't fly across the room as well. The E-clip is also very easy to bend 
uh, and break if you're taking it off the wrong way. So uh, next time you're making an order from the arcade parts store, throw in a couple of extra Eclipse. It's just, they're like 20 cents each. But if you break one, oh, you are going to thank yourself you have some spares. A standard Sanwa JLF stick has a 0.9 pound spring, but it's pretty common to find two pound and four pound aftermarket springs. The question then becomes, which spring is better for you? I say buy them both. They're only like a few bucks each. Try them out, see how you feel. And remember that as you change and you evolve or you play different games, you can swap it out. Try different stuff. You don't always need to have the same configuration. As I got a little bit better at shmups, I realized I wanted a looser stick and that's what I've moved back to a stock JLF uh, spring. If you're in a pinch and you want a stiffer spring but you can't actually order one for whatever reason, you can actually just take a regular spring and just stretch it out like that. If you stretch it out like that and then jam it back into your stick, that will produce uh, a stiffer movement. Now, this is not always completely recommended. It's very imprecise and uh, well, you're kind of gonna wreck your spring. You are going to reduce the life of this spring, but springs are cheap and if you're in a pinch, it is a way that you can get tighter movement. The third simple mod I'm going to suggest today is to lube up your stick, especially if it's a little bit old. If you pull out the shaft, you can see this semicircular part which fits into the stocket on the, the stick housing. That's the pivot point for the stick. And that's where a good amount of your friction is gonna come from. So if you have a new stick, you, you don't really need to do this action for some time, but if you're maybe restoring a classic stick, it can help to apply a very small amount of grease. You definitely don't want to overdo it or you could clog up the movement. You really need a very thin amount of lubricant. You do need to be careful about the type of grease you apply. I use Shinetsu G40M, which comes in this big ass 100 gram tube and costs me about 30 bucks. There are other types available and if you're confused, I recommend buying from the bigger arcade stick vendors who will also typically sell you smaller quantities. The thing is, is that a stick typically needs such a little amount of lube. I mean, I've got this huge box here and it's, it, I'm never gonna run out. Like this is going to become a family heirloom that I'll be passing down to my children as they're playing shmups and fighting games. I'm even preserving the box, the box of a tube of grease. This is peak retro collecting for me. The final simple mod that I'll suggest today is to get an oversized actuator. And an actuator is the part that's inside of here attached to the, the shaft that actually hits and engages the micro switches. The idea being that if the actuator is larger, then there's less distance to engage the micro switch, or basically there's less movement to be able to click it. You need to move this stick less, or it's got less throw, you might also say. I really like to have a larger actuator. I find it easier to uh, control in a bullet hell to make those very precise movements. So it's pretty easy to replace the actuator. We've already pulled the stick apart. When you're putting it back together, you put the shaft down, you put the spring over the top, the actuator goes on, and then you put the E-clip and hold the whole thing into place. And that's how your, your stick will move. I like all of these mods. I like them because they're cheap and they're pretty easy to do. Buy a bunch of springs buy a few different actuators, try them, see which one you like, replace them, do something physical. It, it feels like you're really working on something. And even if you think like, ah, millimeter, what is a millimeter? You can, you can feel it instinctually when you're playing these games. And I personally get like a big satisfaction when I have found the perfect sweet spot for my game and my stick and how I'm feeling right now. The nice thing is, is that even the most advanced stick, you paid 100, 200 for some amazing can bar, some hoary, huge PS4 stick. The sticks essentially still all work the same if you've got maybe a Samitsu or a Sanwa 
JLF. I know that the Korean sticks might work a little bit different and there's optical sticks and there's different kinds. But for the most part, most sticks have this and most sticks are pretty easy to work on. Uh, I think you can't go too wrong. I understand that if you've ever done this before, it could be a little bit nerve wracking. Just paid 200 for my PS4 stick and now I've got to open the whole thing up and pull apart this stick. Will I be able to? I reckon you can. It's, it's not that hard and if you can just handle t getting the e-clip on and off and remember my tip of buying a few extra in case one goes boo across the room and you never see it again. I think you can do it. So that's it. Thanks very much for watching this uh, video. I've got more coming up soon. The next video that I'm going to be working on is how to construct a Damon Byte adapter. I'm going to be doing a few in this series on fight sticks. Damon Byte uh, by Mick Giver over in Finland. He has produced an Arduino template that you can hook up regular controllers via USB, super low latency. That's what I've been using to play Donpachi recently and I'm a big fan. So more videos coming through soon. Thanks for your support. See you next time.